Hi, it's Tom from Green Shorts, and I'm back at the pizza oven, but it has a fatal flaw. It turns out that, well, mineral wool is an excellent insulator. It's not the kind of thing that you should use when you're making food. The fire can actually bring particles of the mineral wool up, drop them into the pizza. Not the kind of fiber that's good for the human system. In fact, I got that important piece of information from several commenters. One of them, Laughing Dragon, actually went as far as to call KO Wool and find out for me that this is not the thing I want. What a great thing for a commenter to do. Dude, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. So I'm actually going to pull the mineral wool out and I'm hopeful that it will stay intact so I can actually use it for another project. I'm going to start by removing the feed ramp here. Go ahead and pull these out of the ground so I can get better access. And so I've got a nitrile glove on here to protect my hands from the mineral wool. Although I think it's wet. It feels like it's wet in there. And then I'm hoping I can just pull the mineral wool out from the bottom of the flue pipe. Yeah, it's soaking wet. It's also not wanting to come out. I may need to go ahead and pull the sand out of the oven from the front and see if we can release it from the top. So I'm gonna pull out as much of the newspaper as I can and some of it will be kind of stuck in the concrete which will just burn out when the oven gets used for the first time. This wood is actually swollen up with the moisture so I may not be able to get this out just yet but I'm gonna give it a try. I had a suggestion when I did the bread oven uh, when I had this type of situation where the blocks of wood had swollen and were difficult to get out to put some screws in the front. get to these blocks in the back. So I'm reaching into the back of the oven here to see if I can get at the two blocks of foam that were on top of the flue pipe to hold the sand up. Once I get those out I'll be able to access the top of the mineral wool where it was mortared in. I feel like a large animal vet right about now. 20. Twins! All right, so now that I have access to the top of the mineral wool, got my glove back on, and I'm gonna get in there and see if I can release it from the top, from the stove mortar that was holding it in place. Although I don't think it was holding it in place very well, so that's actually in our favor right now. Another thing that's in our favor is the fact that the sand was still moist. So the fact that uh, that's probably kept the stove mortar a little bit soft so I can get the top of the mineral wool released. Release the hounds. All right, so I think I've gotten the mineral wool released all the way around. Now let's see if we can get it out of the bottom. I'd like to avoid destroying this if I can because it's expensive. <laughs> or right, let's say it wasn't cheap. That's coming apart. Ah, that's not coming out. One thing you know about this channel is I show you the good times and the bad times. But I think I have a solution here, but it is going to be a bit drastic. The mortar that I used to seal these bricks is not waterproof, so I think it's actually still a little bit soft here. So what I'm going to do is use a mallet to dislodge the bricks on this side and hope this whole thing doesn't fall down. Um, and then that should give me enough space to work the mineral out the rest of the way. I'm going to try it at this point and just see if I can get it to come down and then I can just tap these bricks back in. If I can keep them underneath this, 
that would be a good thing. This is definitely an experimental channel. Sometimes I learn things the hard way. It's like a calf coming out of here. All right. Fairly intact. And now I can let this dry out and use it for a, another furnace project that's coming soon. All right, so I'm gonna tap these back in. All right, disaster averted. One thing I can see on the top edge of the mineral wool here is the remnants of the stove mortar from when I sealed it into the top. And this gives me a level of comfort that I was able to get all the mineral wool out. So in fact, this mortar served to probably hold it together enough so that it uh, came out together. Although once the stove dries out, once it's cured, once it's heated up a little bit, I'll give it a good cleaning back there to make sure there's no remnants of this left. I'm happy that the mineral wool is out. Thanks again, y'all, for great comments there that led me in that direction to remove that. And I think what I'm gonna do is backfill at least this far up in the oven with some more thin fire brick and stove mortar. But before I do that, I wanna do, and I can't resist doing this, to put in a small fire in here. And it's gonna be tricky for me to make a small fire, as you know, but just to kind of dry out a lot of the moisture that's in here. I also kind of want to see how well the draft goes up through the oven and out the chimney versus out the front. I'm committing to a small fire here, trust me. I'm gonna leave the ramp off for now just to make sure I don't go big. Not a lot of smoke happening right now just because the fire is burning cleanly. But I can definitely feel warmth coming out of the top here. And a little bit out of the front of the oven too. I think it's inevitable. The chimney just isn't as big as the flue pipe. So we're gonna have to split the difference between the chimney and the front of the oven. There's definitely some thermal layering happening here. On the bottom of the oven, my hand is fairly cool. As I move it up, I can feel the temperature rising. The fire looks to be drafting pretty well also. So when I cover the front, I can tell there's a lot more smoke coming out the top. So the heat is finding that path. The question is, is it enough to draft? So ideally, I'm gonna have a door on the front of the oven, but we'll need to make sure that that works draft-wise so we still get the rocket effect from the stove portion. So I'm not gonna let this fire get any bigger, rather let it burn out just like this. And I think that's got enough residual heat in the stove and the oven to dry out the moisture that's there and let the concrete continue its curing process. So I've got another couple weeks to wait for this to be finished curing and I will pass the time doing this. Yeah, so about that two weeks been more like four months. Sometimes life just gets in the way. But I think I'm safe to say that the concrete has cured and it's time for us to test out the pizza oven with a full-fledged fire. Before I do that, I'm gonna add the thin fire brick and mortar to the inside of this section of this flue pipe to help it handle the higher temperatures down here in the bottom portion of the rocket stove. So I'm gonna butter the back of each of these bricks and fit them up inside the flue pipe. I'm basically sitting them up inside 
on the top of the full brick right here. So there's a little ledge inside here and that brick's gonna sit inside just like this. Just to add a little extra layer of insulation down here where this is gonna get really hot. The jury is actually still out on this flue pipe because it's not made to handle high temperatures. And I've heard it crack a couple times during an earlier firing of this stove. So I may end up replacing this whole thing with fire brick all the way up, but I'm gonna see how it goes. Most of the, the heat of the fire is usually concentrated in the back of the, the rocket stove. So I'm a little bit concerned about this exposed surface right here, but I'm not gonna do anything about it just yet. Let's see if I can get you a look up inside here. All right, that'll have to do for this retrofit. Once this is dried and they're more secure, I'll probably come back in and fill in those gaps in the corners there between the bricks just to add a little more insulation. But for the purpose of today's test, we're gonna go with it like this. On the top side, I'm gonna do a little cleanup. I'm gonna use my phone light and take a look at the connection between the stove and the oven to confirm that all the mineral wool is gone. All right, let's fire it up. Before I put the ramp back in, I'm going to raise the hearth up a little bit so it's level with the floor of the firebox. Starting out with some hardwood, oak in particular. nice intense heat coming up here to the top. Let's keep this fire going. So I'm already figuring out that the angle of the ramp here is just too steep. So I'm gonna lower the ramp angle a little bit so I can stack more wood on top. That's a little better. One thing I'm noticing that I'm not really sure about is there's some ash building up here on the floor of the oven. Probably gonna land on the pizza. I can get my hand in to about right here and it gets super hot. So, and up higher, nice intensity of heat. So while I'm here, let me add the hearth. This chunk of marble, actually a gray marble, is from right here in North Georgia. The funny thing is, though, I've had this piece of marble for almost 20 years now, and I haven't figured out something to use it for yet. So here you go, 20 years in the making. I picked this up when I was on a trip with some friends in the town of Ballground, Georgia. I think I paid 20 bucks for this. So I think what I'm gonna do, because of the ash, is get the stove good and hot, and then let the fire die down a little bit so the air isn't pulling quite as hard, and then hopefully it won't be pulling as much ash up the chimney. To get some more heat in here, I'm actually gonna put a few sticks on the bottom of the firebox too.
Here's the train. So while the oven's warming up, I'm actually going to go ahead and put the door on the front, the temporary door that is, just to hold as much heat, let that rebar in the roof absorb heat as well. All right, let's go make a pizza. We've actually got some pizza dough proofing here on the porch. And add a little flour to the pizza peel to help the dough slide off easily. A little mozzarella, and I'm gonna throw on some banana peppers. Now into the oven. All right, and we go. Now a true brick oven fired pizza cooks in about 90 seconds at about 900 degrees. At least that's what I've heard. And I don't think I'm producing that kind of heat with this oven. I also need to turn this thing, which I didn't think about when I stuck it in there. Cheese is melting on the back half. The crust is rising nicely. I wonder if I should have left it on the pizza peel. Let's see if I can get it out with the pizza hook. Uh, still two. Starting to firm up a little bit. Stick the door on for a second. The bottom of the pizza didn't crisp up very well, and I think that's probably because the, the bottom of the stove wasn't hot enough. So what I might do in the future is actually slide this thing in on a pizza stone, which I've got preheated. So it does bake the bottom of the pizza better. If I were on the Great British Baking Show, I'm sure Paul would say, there's a soggy bottom. It's a shame. So I've preheated the pizza stone. I'll be honest, this is harder than I thought it was gonna be. But practice makes perfect. I am happy with how the stove is performing. I'm seeing a little crack right here for where the rebar ends and where this uh, curved section starts to see what happens with that. It's a nice smokeless fire. All right, let's turn this thing. I think I probably had too much, too much sauce on there, too much moisture. And yeah, the crust is a little overcooked. All right, so I think I'm gonna need a little bit more practice making pizza. But I do think that the stove and oven combination perform pretty well. So I'm gonna monitor the flue pipe to make sure it doesn't crack. So I'm gonna let this cool and have a bite. Maybe I'll eat the whole thing if it's not too doughy in the middle. Once I get good at using this pizza oven, I think I'll probably make it a little bit more decorative with the tile on the front, perhaps on the sides. We'll see where the stress fractures happen with the heat and then figure out where tile is actually gonna work. It's perfectly functional like this. I do think I will make a proper door for it. As always, our mission here at Green Shorts is to help you see green so you can be green and save a little green by doing it yourself. Although I think probably for the effort that I put into making this stove, I probably could have bought one. In fact, I'll put a link to a pretty interesting pizza oven that's available on Amazon in the description below if you're interested in trying something like this in your backyard. 
please keep the comments coming. I know you're gonna probably have some good ones on pizza mm. technique for me. I've got a lot of learning to do there. It's got a soggy bottom. That's a shame. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.